What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna give you seven ways to optimize OBS to help your computer stream better, record better, and you'll have a better overall understanding and experience with OBS. Let's get into it. All right, so before we get started, I wanna let everyone know you can download the OBS Super User Guidebook in the link below. You can actually order a paperback copy on Amazon. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. If we're doing something wrong, let us know in the comments below. Only 10% of our audience is actually subscribed. And if you're new here, we'd love to have a new subscriber. So when you're optimizing OBS to work with your computer, you need to get to know your computer. There's a couple different ways that you can do that. First of all, if you're on a Mac or you're on a PC, you can pretty much type in about your PC. And if you don't know, you can start learning what does your PC have? What kind of processor does it have? How much RAM does it have? Does it have a graphics card? And you can start understanding kind of where you stand because OBS is totally open for you to max out your computer's processing and graphics capabilities. So you can have a huge 4K or greater resolution. You can have high frame rate. You can push your computer to the max. But what we want to do when we're optimizing OBS is so that it doesn't push your computer too far and it operates within some really good functioning limits. So take a look at your computer and make sure it's up to date. Take a look at all the things that you can use and then what you might want to do is you want to look at your task manager. Now I'm going to open up task manager here so you can see your ability to now on Mac, it's called activity monitor on windows. It is called um, task manager and you can look at the performance of your computer. You can see how much ethernet capabilities you're using, how much CPU processing you're using, and you can, take a look at your graphics processing unit. Now this computer I'm using is an Intel Nook. It does not have a dedicated GPU. It has a, a GPU that's basically the Intel Iris Pro Graphics, the chip. And essentially you can keep your eye on these things. So make sure that your CPU does not go over, you know, 50 to 60%. If you're operating at 75, 80, 90%, you're gonna start to drop frames. So you can see here the utilization and the speed at which the CPU is using. You can look at your memory. And when you start using some of the more advanced plugins, your RAM, your random access memory, starts to get used up uh, quite a bit. And so you got to keep your eye on that. You can't use it too much. Um, also, you generally want to keep an eye on your disk space. Any assets or files you are using on OBS should come from the fastest solid state hard drive or hard drive that you have access to on your computer. And then of course for streaming and IP video, ethernet is very important. Right now, you know, we're sending about 10 megabits, we're receiving about five, it fluctuates. Keep an eye on that. You never want to send more than your network interface card can handle. Now this is different from your upload and download speed available from your internet service provider, like Comcast or Verizon or AT&T. This is your network interface card, the ethernet connection to your computer that you have access to. And then of course, your graphics processing unit. So keep an eye on all of this so you can understand your resources that are available on your computer. Now, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna add stats to OBS. So when you're in the OBS interface, you can keep an eye on the stats. And you can do this by going to the View tab. You can go to Docs and you can click Stats. And then you can dock this directly into OBS. And a lot of people dedicate a large space in their OBS setup for this so that they can keep an eye on their CPU usage, the available disk space for recordings, and all of these settings here. So keep an eye on all of that is frames missed due to re lag, rendering lag, and skipped frames due to encoding lag. We don't want to be dropping frames that can become highly noticeable in your video recordings and streams if you're dropping frames. And we'll take a closer look at how to avoid that. Now, the bit rate is essentially the quality of your recordings. 
and your streams. It affects the amount of data that you're streaming and recording with OBS. And if it's too high for your computer to process, if you're doing 50,000 kilobits per second or 50 megabits, that can be maybe more than your computer can handle streaming and recording at the same time. One of the things that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into the advanced output mode so that you can start to enable some of these encoder presets that will make your OBS system more efficient. So if we go into OBS and we take a look at the settings here, what we will see is that we have in the output tab the ability to go to simple or advanced. The reason why you want to go into advanced is now you can choose your encoder type. Now, OBS is only going to give you the encoder types that you have access to. So in this scenario, you can see here, I can do QuickSync H.264, or I can do X24. And what you can play around with is the rate control and your bit rate for both streaming and recording. Now, the rate control for your project is the ability to choose between either a constant bit rate, which will consistently be the single bit rate that's what you're streaming, or you can change to ABR, which is an adaptive bit rate that allows OBS to adapt the bit rate to your scene that you're streaming, either re reduce or increase the as necessary. Adaptive and variable VBR allow OBS to kind of manage what's going on and try to reduce or increase the bit rate. Now, a lot of people don't like this because when you switch scenes quickly, you might see a few pixels that are out of place. So only use these uh, adaptive and variable if you're in a bandwidth constrained system. So you can also set your CPU usage preset, higher equals less CPU. Now the next thing that we're going to look at, so recording, is you can change your format. Now some of these formats you'll notice do not allow you to adjust the bitrate. And some of these have a warning here that says if you're recording an MP4, or MOV and OBS crashes, your video file will be coverable. But if you're using MKV or FLV and a few of these others, the recordings are recoverable and you can pick up where you started. So that's pretty nice. Now you'll notice here that the encoder settings is just using the same stream encoder as you are using for your recordings. Now, generally, if you want to have a really high quality recording, you can create a second setup for your recordings and you could do a higher bit rate recording. So maybe you could do like, maybe you just stream in five megabits and then you record in 25 megabits, right? Five times the quality for uploading to YouTube later. You can do that, but keep in mind that will increase the processor processor requirements. Now the next thing we're going to look at is the base canvas and the output canvas. So you can see here generally, you know, you can either choose to do 1280 by 720, 1920 by 1080, or 3840 by 2160, which is 4K. I would recommend that you use the same base canvas resolution as your output resolution so that OBS does not need to do any scaling. That will reduce what's necessary for processing. And then the next thing we have is going into the advanced settings of OBS. Now, a quick note, if you use NVIDIA graphics cards, which many of us do, you should go into your manage 3D settings. I have an uh, NVIDIA graphics card on our main broadcast PC here and add OBS studio, as you can see here, to the list of programs that can are authorized to basically use the NVIDIA graphics card, and that will help a lot. Now, the streaming settings in general, we talked a little bit about them. You got to choose you know, where you want to be with your streaming resolution. How do you choose the bit rate? How do you choose what you want to do? Well, you have to decide whether you want to do like a high frame rate stream, right? Do you want to do 60 frames a second? Do you want to do 30 frames a second? In general, if you're streaming you know, video games or sports with a lot of action and a lot of fast paced movement, you may want to do 60 frames a second. If you're doing a talk show or a podcast or video type where there's people moving, 30 frames a second actually looks a lot smoother and more natural. It will also save you on bandwidth. As soon as you go from 30 frames a second to 60 frames a second, you're doubling the amount of frames you're sending and doubling the amount of bit rate that you need. 
you can think about bitrate almost like a canvas. So think about it like you're an artist and the more, the more paint you put on, the more detail you'll have in your canvas that you're streaming. So you can see the bit rates here go up the higher the quality that you choose. And in general, you would rather probably have a high bit rate, low frame rate and resolution. It would look better than if you just try to have a 4K stream, but you don't have the bit rate to produce it. Now in the network settings, this is something that has become really popular in the advanced area of OBS here. There's a couple things you should look at. The first thing I want to show you is to bind to your IP. This allows OBS to say, hey, this is my IP address. This is the network interface card that I should be using. And it actually will help uh, because you may actually be using your Wi-Fi card instead of your ethernet card. And obviously everyone knows, plug in the ethernet, it's better than Wi-Fi, especially for streaming. So we're gonna go ahead and bind to our IP address as opposed to using anything that's Wi-Fi. Now, another thing here is to dynamically change the bit rate to manage congestion. So this has really helped a lot of people to reduce drop frames and it allows OBS to just figure out what the network congestion is. And as soon as there's any dropped frames, it will reduce the bit rate slightly for you, kind of like variable bit rate that we looked at earlier. This one is still in beta, but it, it, has, it has solved so many problems. It can increase the delay, so it kind of adds a buffer. It really works well if you're streaming in RTMP. You can also enable network optimizations, which will allow OBS to optimize what you're doing with your network. And then finally, in here under the settings, you can see I have pr process priority as high or above normal or normal. What this does is it actually looks at the processes happening on your computer and says, okay, well, if we start running out of CPU, if we start running out of memory, let's put OBS Studio higher up in the priority list of our apps than others. So that could be good if you're run, running something else in the background. When you open OBS, you can run it in administration mode. And then just keep in mind that OBS can scale to fit almost any production environment, but you could push your computer too far. So understanding your computer's hardware and what it can handle is imperative. So keep an eye on the OBS stats, keep an eye on your activity monitor, your task manager, and then optimize the settings and start pushing the settings up until you start seeing, all right, we're going too far with this. I need to back it down. And that's the overall takeaway. Well, that was a lot of OBS optimization. Knowing your computer is critical. And once you know what your computer can handle, you can start ramping up what you can do with OBS. Now, in the links below, if you haven't already got your copy of the OBS Super User Guidebook, we are headed down a journey of learning OBS inside and out. We're going on to chapter four next, so stick with us and let me know if you have any questions because I'm happy to answer them.